you know, like the tail for instance and, and the legs just put a series of little little holes and break the skin okay and then for the body cavity just draw up a bit of the um, form and the preserving stuff and just push it in through the, the opening in the body cavity till it overflows okay. Uh, a, a bigger animal like this with a big head might inject a little bit into the mouth cavity area as well. So any of the major body spaces, just fill them up until it sort of overflows. It's still only a couple of mils. And then once that's all done, and you do, and just do it in a couple of rounds, poke all the holes first. That way you can bend over it and there's no formalin coming up in your face. Then when, that, when that's all done and you need to just inject into the body cavity, then you sort of stand back and you're wearing gloves. And you do that and then with the gloves you can then turn the animals over and arrange their feet and their toes long tails we curl around um, because a long tail out the back will become brittle and it'll be hard to yeah. keep it on the animal's body but if you've punctured the tail and put and allowed because what this is now doing it's now sitting on the paper towel is going to get soaked by the formalin that's coming out of the animal's bodies so all of those little holes in the, in the underside of the skin are now going to wick up the um, thing. And so once they're all like that, you can put another layer of paper over the top and then just wet the whole thing with maybe 50 mils of formalin and then seal it up. No, no need to. Um, uh, only, only if you've got a large thing, if you've got something like uromastics or you know, some big lizard or a piranus, something like that, then you would make little injections all over the body. For bigger snakes, if you're, you know, cobra-sized snakes or larger snakes, um, inject maybe every centimetre, put, put, you know, half a mil every couple of centimetres all the way down the body. Um, for smaller snakes, you can just treat them the same way, um, except for smaller snakes, because even a small snake, it can be hard for the material to sort of work its way down. So what I would often do is I'll leave the needle on and just put the needle in along the body cavity and just make sure it goes back. And you concentrate on the hind gut and the gonad area because the, the gonad area is usually very rich in fat which breaks down quickly and causes the body to fall apart and likewise all the bacteria in the hind gut also will multiply quickly. So you fix, fix those areas preferentially. So the, the hardest animals sometimes to preserve are, are, are females with a big yeah. lot of yolky egg follicles, for instance. Yeah. All that fat is difficult to arrest sometimes. Yeah. It takes a while. To, I guess because it's oily, so that the aqueous preservative doesn't yeah, diffuse okay. very well. Yeah. Um, but that, that, that's what we do. So, it's so you don't put any pressure, you just leave it like that? And you just, just leave it like that and just, just, just rest paper, seal it up so that it then very quickly fills up with formaldehyde vapour mm -hmm. and leave it for at least 24 hours. So I look at the issue to see how much formalin you put. Like you go up to there and then you let just let the vapour totally uh, take care of the top part? Or yeah, like the, uh, but there's, there's, there's wet paper over everything so you have okay. a set the second layer over the top. You know, of, of So ev everything is sort of soaked. In, with, with formalin. So there is no liquid going No, no, it. because what if, if, if there's too much liquid around, um, what happens is the, the formalin vapour evaporates out of it and it's just water. Yeah, okay. And if you have animals in, in a warm climate sitting in water, they start to macerate, even yeah. if there's formalin there. Okay. It, so, so you have enough, enough um, formalin so that if you pour it in the side, you, you'll get a little cool. But not, not a whole lot. Yeah, that's right. One of the advantages of that is that if you have to drive somewhere, you can actually transport them, and they won't move too much mm -hmm. unless you go over a bump. Yeah. It depends, depends what the roads are like. Um, so, all, all this pros procedure is is mentioned in that um, okay. manual. But it's good to see how you do it actually. Yeah. It's different yeah. to actually see than to read it. Oh yes, it is, and and it, as I say, it, it's it's. It works best if you have two people doing it, one person keeping track of all the numbers and writing everything down and the other person just doing the, yeah. the activity. Because um, it, it, you know, if, you're, if, you're going to if you have 15 animals to preserve one of these, it might take you an hour and a half mm -hmm. to, to do them. 
So if you're out in the field and you're busy all the time, it can be, yeah, I mean, it, I, I tend to pick a time when I can't do very much else. So if it's very hot weather, I'll do it during the afternoon because I'm not going to go out yeah. in, in the hot sun when, when nothing's moving. Mm -hmm. um, or if it's cold, do it at night. Yeah. You know, it just depends on what the weather's like. But, um, but that's, that's what you should end up with. You should end up with an animal that's, that's really well preserved, very lifelike. The colours and the, the pattern, at least. I mean, th this animal, when it's alive, is, is paler and more, more sandy, orange coloured. So the, the yellow pigments are alcohol soluble. So whenever you, once, once they go into ethanol, um, any species that has a lot of green or yellow, blue, not, not so much blue, but green or yellow, red pigments, those right. colours will disappear as the yellow is taken out and it just leaves brown or grey or whatever. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. Yeah. But for, for a lot of reptiles that doesn't matter mm -hmm. because for a lot of reptile species the exact shade of colour is not so important, it's quite variable. But the, the pattern, the shape, yeah. where the stripes are or where the dark markings are, and those, those patterns don't change in preservation okay. unless you leave it in the light for too long, mm -hmm. in which case it'll bleach. Yeah. So uh, one thing that we don't, you know, stuff that's here on the shelves is being worked on and where we actually keep it is, is in the dark. Okay. So, and um, the other thing is high temperatures can be a nuisance too. So when, when these things are in the field and they're setting, we try and put them in the coolest part of the camp, you know, in the shade, sort of next to where we're keeping the vegetables or something like that so that uh, there's if the temperature's too high, uh, you will get yeah, discoloration. And what is too high, like more than 30, more than 40? Oh, uh, you're more than 35. <laughs> yeah, you know, try and keep, keep it out of the 40s if you can, you know. So if it's comfortable for you, it's probably comfortable for the specimens. Uh, but yeah, don't, don't leave it in the, in the sun. Don't leave it on the sunny side of the tent. You know, leave it on the cool side of the tent. Um, 